this is crazy. This is crazy. So if you scroll down, uh, long story short, uh, in clinic, uh, Brewer and some of his associates in this, in this paper, they were testing using urine testing, which is what Justin and I run in clinic as well. We do a urine mycotoxin screen. And right here on the first page, it's crazy. It says right here that urine specimens showed that 93% of his chronic fatigue patients, these are known chronic fatigue sufferers, 93% of those were positive for at least one mycotoxin. Correct. So if you look here, right, here's 112 patients, 93% had at least one mycotoxin. And again, you have different mycotoxins. You have the aflatoxin. This is common, like peanut stuff, okra toxin. And then you have the trichothecenes, which is common in the, in the black mold, the, the stachybotrys black mold, okay? So these different toxins we can actually test. And now it's important, some people may test these things and they don't do a really good glutathione push. People that have really poor detoxification, they may not push these things out. So you really wanna make sure a couple of days ahead of time you do a good glutathione push. And, and even that, you may just wanna even look at the home too and do a really good plate test on your home and we use immunolytic labs. We'll put some links down below if you guys want to procure those tests. But some people, they, they may have a hard time pushing it out. So it's yeah. Yeah, num so number one is I always recommend do a good glutathione push. If you feel icky or really bad or brain foggy or tired or fatigued, that could be a good sign. Uh, also, if you have a lot of mold in the home, especially molds that have these mycotoxins, the nice thing about the immunolytics lab, it'll tell you if these mycotoxins are produced by the species of mold they find. So they see aspergillus, or different mold that can be produced during water damage, then usually there's an there's usually going to be a mycotoxin attached to it. There are some molds that are natural, like in soil and just plant degradation outside. Those are different. Some more from pet dander and those kind of things. So you're able to get a window into all those things as well. Yeah, and I just want to say one comment about the push. Uh, when I first did my original mycotoxin urine screen, I did do glutathione for maybe three days, and I guess that wasn't enough because my mycophenolic acid, which is a mycotoxin that comes from penicillium, which I was exposed to, my level was a 12, which was in the red range, but it was just barely. And then when I retested six months later, after trying really hard and doing sauna therapy, which is another way you could actually do provocation. If someone doesn't have glutathione, you could do a sauna session, then collect urine. That could also help. But six months later, my levels went from a 12 to a 1,700. My levels were off the chart. Even though I'd been trying for six months to get it out and I did feel better, some may look at that. And I've had some clients you know, call me and they're like, I'm crying. I'm freaking out. My levels went up. What's going on? And we explain most of the time that doesn't mean new exposures happen. That just means you're getting better at detoxification and you're pushing more out. And that's what happened to me. So my levels were really, really low. Six months later, they were really, really high. And then another six to eight months later, they were low again, indicating that I did actually detox it and push it out. 